You want to skip ahead to the product you will be installing. Aluminum trim and tray installation. For a more professional appealing look, finish off the dry erase material with one of Wall Talker's aluminum or wood trim and tray products. Lay out the work to be completed, including all parts, along the base of the wall. Be very careful not to scratch adjoining pieces of aluminum. Wall Talker supplies the extruded aluminum trim and tray, steel mounting clips, and end caps, all based on the quantities ordered. You'll need to supply the miter saw, screwdriver, tape measure, drill, drill bits, rivet gun and rivets if using end caps, wall anchors, screws, level, chalk line, ladder, and drop cloth. One screw and or anchor is required for each mounting clip. Clips are installed 16 inches on center. Always install the aluminum tray before the trim. Determine the finished length of the tray with or without ends. Deduct three and a half inches from the finished length measurement. One and three quarter inches for each end cap. For wall-to-wall -wall measurements, end caps are not necessary. Using a fine tooth carbide tip blade on a radial arm or miter saw, cut a small portion of one end of the aluminum tray at a 90 degree angle, assuring a square end. From the cut end, measure and cut the opposite end in the same manner to the desired length. This next step you'll need to complete twice, once for each end cap. Insert the end cap tab into the corresponding open end of the tray. Make sure the faces of the end cap and the tray are lined up and tight together. On the bottom and top of the tray, drill a 1 8 inch hole completely through both the tray and the end cap tab. Use a drill bit that is capable of penetrating aluminum. Insert a 1 8 inch aluminum pop rivet and grip it down tight. Place another rivet through the top on the small flat portion that touches the wall. Repeat this step again for the second end cap. Determine the finished height of the tray on the wall. If the wall talker surface is being used, the top of the tray should slightly overlap the bottom of the wall covering. Line up the top of the steel mounting clips, the flat beveled side, to the chalk line. The clip should be installed with solid contact in the wall studs with number 10 by 1 and 1 half inch screws. If the clip screws do not contact the studs, use wall anchors. Install clips 4 inches in from each outside edge of the end caps. Snap the tray cover over the clips. This may require two installers for longer lengths. Hook the top back edge over the tops of the clips and apply downward pressure to lock the tray in place. The clips are slotted if any adjustment in height is needed. Determine the location of the trim. Mark the inside dimensions of the trim on the wall with something that will not permanently damage the surface. For example, if you are trimming the wall talker's dry erase wall covering, use a dry erase marker to make the level and plumb lines. For darker surfaces, snap a chalk line. Be sure to overlap the wall talker's edges, since that will ensure a good edge appearance on the writing surface. Using the wall measurements, measure, mark, and cut the aluminum trim pieces to size. Use a miter saw with a fine-tooth carbide tip blade. If you're installing a full-length tray, which will end at the outside edges of the wall covering, then three pieces of trim will be required, the top and two side pieces. The bottom of the side pieces will terminate flush on the top side of the tray. If you prefer, the cut edges of the trim can also be mitered to 45-degree angles. Install the steel clips 5 30 seconds inch outside the markings on the wall. The clips should be installed every 16 inches on center, making solid contact with the wall studs using number 10 by 1 and 1 half inch screws. The angled side of the clips, or the flat beveled side, should always be mounted toward the ceiling on horizontal runs. Rounded edge faces the floor. For vertical runs, the clips can be installed either way. The clips are slotted so they can be adjusted if needed. Now install the trim pieces onto the clips. Place the aluminum trim over the angled side of the steel clips. Hold the face of the trim at a 45 degree angle from the wall. Hook the trim piece over the beveled edges of the clips and apply pressure with the heel of the hand to the side not locked in. Trim will snap into the locked position. 
Repeat the same steps with all pieces of trim. For longer installations, a splice may be required. To assure a clean splice, the aluminum trim and tray pieces should be cut to square right angles. Also, a mounting bracket should be installed, so half of the clip supports one piece of trim and the other half supports the other piece. For black trim and tray, it can be touched up with a permanent black marker or paint. For satin anodized trim and tray, for light scratches, Scotch-Brite can be used lightly to remove scratches. Wood trim and tray installation. Lay out the work to be completed, including all parts, along the base of the wall. Make sure the wood is stored on a clean drop cloth, carpet, sawhorses, etc. to avoid scratching the wood. Wall Talker supplies the wood trim and tray. You'll need to supply the miter saw, screwdriver, tape measure, drill, drill bits, wall anchors, screws, level, chalk line, ladder, drop cloth, wood glue, wood filler, touch-up stain, satin polyurethane, construction adhesive, and countersink bit. Determine the location of the trim. Mark the inside dimensions of the trim on the wall with something that will not permanently damage that surface. For example, if you're trimming the wall talker's dry erase wall covering, use a dry erase marker to make the level and plumb lines. For darker surfaces, snap a chalk line on the material. Be sure to overlap the wall talker's edges, since that will ensure a good edge appearance on the writing surface. Using the wall measurements, measure, mark, and cut the wood trim pieces to size. Use a miter saw to cut the corners at 45 degree angles. Assure the trim pieces are square prior to adhering and fastening to the wall. If the tray is going to be used, install bottom trim first. Mark holes on the wall at each stud or 16 inches on center with solid wood backing. Transfer the marks on the wall to the lower piece of the trim molding. The mark should be made approximately a quarter inch from the bottom edge of the trim. Pre-drill, using a 1 8 inch bit or a bit slightly larger than the screw to be used, through the trim at every mark. Use a countersink bit to make a slight indentation at each screw hole. The countersink hole will conceal the screw head. The screws must make contact with wall studs or wood backing to properly support the tray. For concrete and block walls, you'll need masonry anchors. For walls where wood or metal studs are not easily accessed, use drywall anchors. Apply the bottom horizontal trim piece with construction adhesive and number 10 by 2 inch flathead wood screws. The vertical and top pieces of trim can now be installed with construction adhesive. The construction adhesive will allow for slight adjustment of pieces for a proper fit. Finish nails may be used to hold the trim in place as the adhesive cures. After adhesive has cured, countersink or remove the nails and patch the hole with a wood filler of similar color. Most installations require a full length tray across the entire length of the wall covering. Outside edges of the tray can be finished in a number of ways. The edges can be left as blunt end or mitered to a 45 degree angle. The ends should then be finished with a similar stain and clear coated with a satin urethane finish. Install the tray with number 10 by 1 inch wood screws. Like the trim installation, pre-drill 1 8 inch holes and again use the countersink bit to create small cavities to hide the screw heads. Install wood screws every 16 inches on center slightly offset from the trim installation hardware. In order to splice the wood trim or tray, 45 degree angle cuts are required for the joint to have a good appearance. Apply a small amount of wood glue between the two pieces of trim. Press the pieces together and install finishing nails for the trim on each side of the splice. This is approximately one and one half inches from the splice. On the trim, countersink the finish nails and patch with wood filler of similar color. Clean wall talkers, trim, and tray. If the trim or tray has any unfinished areas due to cutting the wood or scratches in the surface, the wood can be touched up with stain. Touch up with matching stain and finish with a satin polyurethane coat. Paper rail installation. The paper rail is an aluminum extrusion with a system of plastic rollers inside. These rollers work by gravity and pressure to hold paper in place. Simply push the paper into the rail and lift the paper up at an angle to remove it. 
it is important for the rail to be parallel to the floor to make it work properly. Wall Talker supplies the extruded aluminum housing, the interior roller system, mounting brackets with hardware, and end caps. You'll need to supply the miter saw, screwdriver, tape measure, drill, drill bits, wall anchors, screws, level, chalk line, ladder, drop cloth, measure the wall and paper rail to see if the rail needs to be cut. If so, mark the rail and cut it to size. If the paper rail is pre-assembled, remove the end caps and the necessary amount of plastic rollers that will not interfere with your cut. Use a miter saw with a fine tooth carbide tip blade. Cut a factory edge off one side of the aluminum extrusion. Place an end cap on the end of the aluminum just cut. Measure and mark the finish length on the aluminum, deducting 1 16th inch for the second end cap. Cut the aluminum at the length mark. With one end cap in place, put the system of rollers within the aluminum. Insert the plastic rollers into the aluminum so the point of the roller inserts into the adjacent roller. Place the second end cap on. Use a level to assure a good finished look. Use a chalk line or a straight edge and pencil to connect the highest set of marks made on the wall. If installing in conjunction with wall talkers, the paper rail should overlap the top of the wall talker surface.